Hello and welcome to another jungle video and in this one we shall be doing our season 12 2022 jungle decision making test. That's right, the quest for being the perfect jungler never ends and so in season 12 with the meta shift I thought updating last year's very successful video would be a good way to go. And yes, in this one we shall be focusing on the early game, the mid game and the late game and you can test to see if you would be the perfect jungler by answering every question correctly. Let me know your score in the comments below. So as always, if you enjoy these educational videos and of course these decision making tests, please leave a like and of course subscribing. Don't forget our bootcamp is coming up at the end of February, so sign up for that. Obviously, if you watch this afterwards, those VODs are available through the same ticketing mechanism. Patreon has your coaching VODs as well as your coaching signups. And now, without hesitation, you may begin your test. Okay, to lay the foundation for the first question, we obviously have a Diana versus a Gwen. Very popular matchup these days, specifically considering Gwen is kind of OP in the jungle. And because so many of you love Viego, I found a game that also has a Viego in it in the top lane. I did try to get Diana versus Viego in the jungle, but it always ended up being a bit weird. You would have seen the runes on your screen, absolutely standard stuff. And you're watching the Diana do a little bit of level 1 defense. There is no question here, just simply a case of watch your entrances early, leave a ward as you need, you can probe with the spells if you have, just don't be caught out, and be very restrained with your flash if you don't need to burn it. Ultimately though, your goal is always to adapt your game plan should someone decide to invade you, but in this case, nothing like that happens. And remember, you are never too advanced for fundamentals, so let's do a question to warm you all up. Diana starting on the blue buff, where is the Gwen starting? Well, given that bot lane is late to leash, obviously in the frames you can see the HP and the mana dwindling, but that's not really the point. In game, you would see everyone's late to lane, we know she's starting on the red. At this point, you're asking yourself, what might she be actually doing as a game plan? So I'm not really going to ask the question for it. But naturally, Diana does like to full clear, as does Gwen, and that gives him a bit of a level 4 advantage in terms of crabs, fighting, and ganking. Now, I've done a lot of early game content already this season about what routes you should be doing, so I will link below those sort of matchups where you do a Red Raptors Grump versus a full clearer and so on. But in this game, we end up on our red buff at around 240, we freeze the frame, we look at the state of the map. What is your game plan at this point? Are you going to gank top lane? Are you going to gank mid lane? Or are you going to invade the enemy jungler in hopes of securing that crab? Or should you simply do your Krugs? That's right, we should be doing our Krugs. Look at mid lane, heavily, heavily pushed in. Shen isn't level 3, he will be by the time we get there, but he's quite low, it is a victor. Viego's looking okay to gank, and the huge component of our decision here is that the Gwen is much slower at full clearing than we are. We also do have range of his melee in both our solo lanes. So you finish your Krugs, you end up in the tri-bush. What do we do in this situation? Now you need to be thinking, where is the enemy jungler? Yes, even the slower of the meta junglers should be on their grump at this point. They just won't reach the 315 timer of the crab, which means, can we actually fight over the crab? No, we cannot because Victor has disappeared from the mid lane. We don't quite know where he is. He's moved up in the lane toward should we go for the fight, we might end up in a 3v1. And so the correct assessment, if you were thinking about this, is to go for this gank. It's the easiest thing for us to do. Do not hesitate. Move into position and make sure we pull the trigger before the Gwen can make this a 2v2. Diana does so righteously and the Jace doesn't even have time to flash. The poor fool. So in this situation, should we go and fight for that crab to make sure we defend its honor? Should we have stayed to push the wave or should we simply just go back to base? Okay, firstly, we definitely want to push the wave because we have more red than blue. We also can look at the map and see where our minion wave is so we know where the enemy minion wave is, which means that Jace will be able to TP in and keep the wave in the most beautiful position against the Viego. Let's help push, force a TP, and now it crashes, which is what we want. From here, we can go back to base. You also will notice that the Gwen had 29 CS because she did a full clear, that's 24 CS, plus the crab, that's 28, and she killed the ward, that's 29. Which means even if you could fight over that crab, it no longer exists. Right, the question here as we get back to bases, where is the enemy jungler going to go? Top or bottom side? That's right, Laika, she started on the bottom side, which means her second tier Krugs and Raptors, like our second tier Grump and Wolves, will be spawning or will have had spawn. This means not only do we want to be bottom side to potentially secure that bottom crab, we also want to fall back to our highest tier camps, protect them, but also position ourselves to protect our bottom lane who are kind of pushing and are inviting the enemy jungler to show up. So you want to be present for that counter gank should it come to pass. And as I'm sure you're witnessing, the Diana decided, hey, I'm going straight to gank. I can see that the Gwen took that bottom crab already, and if she hasn't shown bottom lane, it means she was falling back to farming. As always, ladies and gentlemen, the biggest meta decision in this particular season is out of base, gank your bottom lane, fall back to dragons, fall back to your cams, reward yourself with the juice. 
But first, you have to put in the work. The Gwen was simply going to farm her business away, and the Diana said, you know what, I could counter gank you, but if you're going to be lazy and farm, I'm going to make some action happen, and you will die for it. Yes, it was very, very close, but we knew the Gwen was in the area, and so by pulling the trigger likewise from the top side, we are able to get the gank done, and so now, obviously, we need to base, right? No, of course not. We know the Gwen out of base will basically decide, hey, I need to go to the top side. This is because even though she didn't secure her red side camps, the Grump will be the last to spawn, which means it will be the highest level on the map for her and thus allow her to slingshot her experience. If we decide to go back to base and try and, you know, sequence up from there, we are going to open the window for her to counter jungle our raptors and Krugs, which is not what we want. And because we have Smite and a Grump, we can recoup a lot of those lost resources. Now, we're on our walls, we're almost level 6, we see this 2v2 developing in the mid lane. Do we say, hey, you guys are idiots, I'm not doing that, I'm gonna go farm and protect my chickens? Do you rotate down the middle and say, hey, huzzah, can I have some of this action? Or do you go back to base? No, the quest is to be the perfect jungler. Reactively path, rotate, get there before the Gwendolyn can. Obviously, you can finish your walls first, and that's the thing you need to think about there because you're very close to six. If you were nowhere near six and you needed to rotate sooner, do so. But in this case, the ultimate is a game changer. Now, in this situation, you might have expected the Gwen to maybe either do grunt walls and sequence down and thus be present for where we end up after the kill. However, because we see she's not there and we see her raptors are just lying about at level 4, we can snack on this freebie and you know that Gwen will most likely look to vertical jungle and take your raptors and Krugs or potentially gank top lane, which is pushing. By pushing, he's in the middle of trying to push the limits against Jace and try to get some kills. He's not paying attention to what we're paying attention to because he's a top laner. As such, you will see this transpire. Now, if you kept on sequencing because there was no mid lane fight, you'd be in prime position to actually counter gank this, although you'd have to consider the fact that the Gwen had reset more recently and actually had better itemization. I do prefer the blasting one over the alternator. It's a better bet for you as Diana. You're clear fast, you're better in dueling. Try and get that first. However, none of that happened whatsoever, and we ended up on chickens with another kill, leaving our top side a little bit naked and us sitting next to some chickens. So what we do is we secure those, and now what do you do? With this information, do we take the dragon? Do we wait for Victor? Do we steal her red buff? Do we gank bottom lane? Do we do none of the above, or do we do all of the above? That's a little bit of a trick question because, yeah, we're going to do all of those things. Now, if we were tracking TP cooldowns, we'd know we don't have to wait for Victor, but we are kind of waiting for that red buff to spawn. So if he decided to cancel his back, we'd be there to capitalize. Overall, though, it is a bit of waffling and wasting time. We actually could have and should have simply moved him on down to take the Krugs in the meantime, observed bottom lane potentially, and then we could fall back to the red very, very smoothly without losing any time. From here, however, yes, 100%. Look for the bottom lane gang, look for the bottom lane dive, assess where exactly the laners are. You know that there will be ward protection most likely, so you have to approach it with caution caution and decisiveness. However, when Gwen chose top lane, you know she's taking your Krugs. There's nothing really she can do to interfere, therefore free dragon, either instead of ganking or simply after ganking anyway. Now you have gone back to base, your blue buff had spawned, your grump was spawning and your wolves are spawned shortly thereafter. Your red is also up. Where do you go next? Yes, yes, we must go to the top side. Do not be baited in by the thick thighs of the blue buff. If you were paying attention to the minimap while you were going back to base instead of shopping, which you should have, you would have noticed the Gwen's portrait show very, very briefly on the Shen moving up into your red side, which means you know she straight up took your Krugs and Raptors because of all the things you did on the bottom side. That's fine. We wanted to avoid it originally, but we got more than enough back in our favor. And because we see the Gwen moving back into the red, this is horrific spaghetti pathing by the Gwen, by the way. She realizes at this point that the Diana has taken a Raptor's red, killed the bottom lane, she's taken the dragon, she has a blue side, and there's nothing for the Gwen to do. Perfect jungling means making the enemy jungler confused and forcing them into suboptimal plays that you can read and cut off. Shen does the good work anyway, and we see he's going to run to the top side, which many of you midlanders might do without paying attention to minion states, which means what can you do as the jungler with a fresh rocket belt? Yeah, you just hold the wave because you have itemization completion, you have a red buff ticking already, there's no real need to take yours just yet, and there's no other camps on the red side. In this situation, it's likely the Gwen feels a little bit of pressure. She might think you went to your blue side, Shen protected the red, and so she's now safe to do the Herald. Obviously, if she sees you mid lane, she should know that's not the case. And the blue team should recognize, hey, wait a second, Diana has Rocket Belt completed, we don't win this 3v3. And they're very lucky that only the Gwen died and they were able to secure the Herald, which now is at least a nigh to Diana, although this could be quite catastrophic. You are Diana, we've just won this fight, we are on this Herald that we are denying, what do you do next? Do we invade the Gwen's blue side and try and steal that blue buff, maybe some other camps? Do we go sit in the tri-bush on the top side and wait to dive the Jace? Or do we fall back to our red buff and then sequence down? 
No, the enemy jungler is dead, which means you should always do things against them that you couldn't do should they be alive. In this case, steal her blue buff. Because we see the pike, we know that we're not able to actually stick around and do a grump and maybe dive top lane. We know that Gwen might be heading this direction. We don't really want to force a fight just yet, so we can take the blue, fall back to our red buff now, protect that side. All those camps will be respawning at a higher tier level. Thank you very much, Gwen. Shen has forced a base, and we want to deny plantings to the victor who's pushing it out, which means we just reverse push it back into him, giving the Shen time to get back into lane. Gives us a little bit of XP infusion as well, and now we fall back to the Raptors. This is a bit of a Nexus decision where you can have a split universe outcome. From here, do you go to your Krugs and base? Do you go to your Krugs and gank top lane? Or do you anticipate the Gwen doing her Grump sequencing down? And thus, you also want to match that to be in a position to protect your fed bottom lane. In this situation, I think the idea definitely is to do Krugs, reset, and then path down to match. The thing is, being a perfect jungler means trying to be present for every lane when it is opportunistic to do so. In this situation, the Jace is hard pushing, Shen commits his ult a little soon, goes for the taunt, the Jace is forced to flash, but if he didn't get that off, we would have been there to capitalize on the kill, so it's a good move overall to react and understand that this was a play that could be made. Unfortunately, despite the fact that Gwen walked through Vision and we know where she is, bot lane still ended up in a fight. I'm not going to ask you a question about this because out of base, you should already be saying, yes, I'm pathing directly to the bottom side, I want to be able to clean this up. If they overcommit, I get a triple kill. I must be present to save this fight. Which fortunately for us, a bottom lane ends up being competent. Sometimes they won't be, but you'll still be able to clean up kills. In this situation, we're able to take one. This alone is worth the time investment. We have an astronomically big lead. So after this, the Diana is going to go back into a blue side and full sequence. This is a good idea, yes or no? Seeing as a lot of you will simply say yes to these decision-making questions, I decided to throw in that trick question. As you can see, she did not do that. The enemy jungler was dead. She was gray screen. What can we do that we couldn't do should she be alive? Well, move into a jungle. But instead of counter jungling and worrying about that because we know she just farmed that side, let's go ahead and gank the mid lane. A transition gank from bottom lane to mid lane. An absolute huge strategy in season 12, much like I said earlier, where you want to head directly to bottom side and then reward yourselves with camps and a sequence. In this case, you went bottom lane with a fight. You managed to pick up a kill. They can push it out, you move into the mid lane, you get a kill, he can push it out. Now you know Gwen most likely will be attracted to holding a wave to catch up a bit, so you can then go for a full sequence yourself. However, because we farm so quickly at this point, it really isn't much of a time sink. We do see Gwen go up from the mid lane, which means we want to protect those raptors, which we do, and the Gwen decides to reverse field and head to the bottom side. This is an excellent play from her part because she knows if they saw her go up that the Dan is going to be sequencing up again, and they will meet for a 2v2 in the top lane, which she's not really interested in. She wants to gank the bottom lane again while the Diana isn't there, so it's an excellent bluff call by her. But from the Diana's perspective, she sequences up, she ganks the Jace once more, knowing he has no flash, excellent decision. Now you ask, where is the Gwen from my position, and is this a good idea to hit tower plates? Yes it is, there's about one minute left for those suckers to disappear, and we know if the Gwen didn't show up for that 2v2 after going up, that she most likely sequenced down. Now following this, we see the crab, we take the crab, we know Gwen took the dragon, we see her ganking bottom lane. What do we do in this situation? Equal and opposite, take her Krugs and Wolves and kill top lane again? Do we just simply go and hold and push mid lane? Or do we simply go back to base and then head to the bottom lane? Or none of the above? Yes, well done if you said none of the above, because you can see from the HP bars and the minimap that Shen is going in on the victor. Even in this meta that can focus on farming quite heavily, it's still about being everywhere at once. We just gain top lane, we take a crap, we react and kill the victor mid lane, and now you see bottom lane getting dove by three people. Straight down, make sure you impact that. Now, if the fight was lost and that enemy laners were all alive and you could do nothing about it, yeah, pushing mid lane and getting some more plates is a great idea. But because they're all very low HP under tower and you are super fed, reactively path and get that triple kill. This is one of those read and reacts that you need to make to carry games because if you make the wrong mistake here and take Grump and Wolves, potentially your whole bottom lane dies and they get five plates. Maybe your Shen dies and Victor gets away with it. All of a sudden you've taken two camps, but everyone is dead. In this situation, because we recognized all of these cues, we were able to gank all three lanes in succession, and now the game is basically won. However, only if you make the right subsequent decisions to push the map and close it out. So, top or bottom side? 
That's right, top side. The Jinx decided to take out Cam, so we'll be pushed to Wave and Turco Tower. That's fair play. Now she can go mid lane. The Herald is the objective spawning. We have a full red side slate of camps, and we know Gwen will be on that side as well. The Gwen again is not interested in this nonsense and decides to sequence down to kill the Shen. That's right, we only take the chickens and then we do the Herald, that's what we're interested in because we have no need to farm right now. We are super fed, we are looking to push the map and win the game. Now you have the Herald, you have your team mid lane, you see two people pushing bot lane getting a lot of towers and bounties. What do you do? Do you reset and maybe cut them off or do you simply stay mid and use the Herald? Yeah, you stay mid and use the Herald. What are they going to do against a Jinx with a Herald and a Diana? Are they going to base race you at this stage? Highly unlikely. So if they do force a commit to defend against you, kill them. You have a huge lead. There's nothing they can do about it. From here, we have enough for Shadow Flame, which is a great anti-shield item in this game. So we go back to base. Now, here's a very difficult question. If you want to push the map and win the game, you need to answer this one correctly. Do we go to the top side or to the bottom side? That's right, we go to the bottom side. Why? Well, because Nautilus reset after us, because the Viego's still busy in the river. The Jinx hasn't reset either. She's gonna fall back to red and take it and go back to base. There are no cams, no objectives on the top side for you, and the enemy team is gonna have nothing to really do other than kill the Shen again on the bottom side, who will be splitting by himself. He's the lone thing that they can see and do while the rest of your team are resetting, except if you have the power to shadow and make a play yourself. And now to end this game quickly, you need to push the map, which means do not fall back to your blue side jungle. Your whole team is now on the map, pushing towers, you have numbers advantage, move into the jungle, steal camps, look for picks, push towers, and because of this kill on the Gwen from the shadowing, they were able to do just that. They do take two inhibitors at an early point in the game. Is this a good idea, yes or no? In a game where you were, say, an early game team and they were a late game team and this would just infuse them with double waves of supers and potentially you wouldn't be able to get the top wave and the Baron thusly, this is definitely risky and I've spoken about this a lot on stream and a lot in coaching videos. However, minus this inting death of fun, please don't do this. The pressure the inhibs will provide will not relinquish your lead as a scaling team comp. You can easily move into the top side of the map after resetting or respawning. You end up sitting in front of Lul Baron. Do you start it up immediately and just coin flip the result? Do you sit in a bush and wait to set a pick? Or do you move into the jungle looking to kill whoever's collapsing because you see the victor very much in the middle lane? That's right, we have such a big lead, they cannot match us, even if Victor TPs. Move on in, force the fight, make sure you are making the picks before they have numbers advantage, clean anyone up, and then you can do the Baron. Just remember not to force 5v5 fights in a bad situation there, because then not only will they get the Baron, they will also get the double waves of supers, and you will basically throw the game. So it's very important while you have numbers advantage or the pick advantage to use it properly. Now, obviously, I could ask one more question where do we potentially just try and, you know, make picks for people who respawn and then push to end? Please watch the death timers, don't commit to things you cannot finish, reset and then run it down mid lane in a better way. It's very often that you would see people actually try and end the game here even with a numbers disadvantage as the enemy farm supers, respawns, keeps getting more items and eventually you will be overwhelmed, you will give shutdowns and you can reverse the course of the game. So just make sure you're being a little bit restrained in this phase, reset, get your final itemization, buy an elixir and then just run it down online into their nexus. We don't care about soul, we don't care about anything else, use your lead and end the game. Well, there you have it, a whole bunch of questions, a full phase game, perfect except for the little int on the inhibitor, but we need to have fun sometimes too. Let me know in the comments how many you got correct. I hope you enjoyed and learned something a little bit longer this year, a bit more in depth actually. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like, share and comment if you did enjoy and learn something. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.